On this first episode of Season 2 of Wilson the VW Bus, I have finally had enough of the VW drum brakes and get Wilson a front disc conversion, but I nearly lost my elbow at the start of the summer fun bus season. Stay tuned to hear my story. Hello and welcome to Season 2 of Wilson the VW Bus the podcast about my adventures in my 1967 VW camper bus. Last season, I told you about how I found and purchased Wilson, the backstory of his previous owners and the places they had been to, and guided you through the year-long restoration process that I spent welding and wrenching and putting Wilson back together and on the road. Now, at this point, Wilson has had all the rusted-out metal removed in the cargo area and the front nose, and it's been replaced with new metal panels, some of which I received with the initial purchase of Wilson, and some had to be sourced out. I also rebuilt the interior wood panels and recovered the seats with this awesome Westphalia blue-green plaid, and I got Wilson roadworthy, or at least that's what I thought. It turns out that although I spent plenty of time and money chasing around the original VW bus drum brake issues, I still had a defective master cylinder that caused me to lose braking and run through a traffic light or two on my way home from my first car show. I had acquired a replacement master cylinder, albeit a Chinese reproduction part, but as I explained last season, I was contemplating raising the steering bus on the bus, so that would have had required me to remove the master cylinder for that repair too, so I figured I'd do this job only once and not twice. In the end, however, I decided not to raise the steering box, but instead protect it with a skid plate, So now I could address that final brake component and get this bus to stop safely so I could begin to really have some fun with it. So now it's May 31st of 2022, and my son Zach and I are getting a few things cleaned up in the garage before we begin the brake job. One of those projects that we always tackle at this time of year is to swap the hard top on his Jeep for the soft top. Now we've always had Jeeps in our family. My grandfather had an old CJ5 that we would use to go out on the beach at Island Beach State Park here in New Jersey. Uh, My mom had a Levi's Renegade with a V8 in the 70s when we lived in Maryland, and we would take that off-roading with our good friends, and they had a first-generation Bronco. That was pretty cool. I also owned about four Jeeps myself. So swapping the top is a pretty easy job, and the two of us can knock it out in just a few minutes. But the soft top is being stored currently in my attic. So I climb up into the attic to get the boxes in the top, and without going into the gory descriptive details, I end up accidentally cutting my elbow down to the bone. It's bad enough that I need to go and get a bunch of stitches, and thank God Zach's there to pick me up off the floor and get me to the doctor's to be put back together. I figured that now in my condition, there is no way I can climb under the bus for now and work on the brakes, so this injury is going to set Wilson and I back a bit. Ironically, the moment that I got home from the doctors with my arm in the sling, I received an email from one of my parts suppliers that the front disc brake conversion kit that I had been looking at is finally available. And all I need to do is click the send it to me now button and I can get it. Well, I certainly have time now to collect more parts for a better braking system, so that's just what I did. I'm getting disco brakes on the bus. A few days later... I feel that my elbow is in good enough shape for some light work, and I pull out the stitches and bandage everything up real quick so as not to get any dirt in the wound, and I start to disassemble the front brakes completely. It's a pretty clean and easy job because I just cleaned and rebuilt these front drums a few months ago. The new front disc conversion kit arrives, and it has everything. New rotors, calipers, mounting brackets, the master cylinder... The inner and outer wheel bearings and races, brake hoses and bolts. The only thing I really needed was brake fluid, with the exception of one missing wheel bearing. Actually, they sent me two inner wheel bearings for the one side instead of an inner and outer bearing. But I called them up, and they mailed me the correct part immediately, and with their apologies. The woman on the phone was pretty funny. She told me to be careful, because she guaranteed that my bus never stopped as good as it would now with their brakes on it. So I should make sure that I had my seatbelt on when I took the the bus out for the first ride with the new brakes. She was correct. Other than some minor adjustments and fine-tuning, 
These breaks were awesome. And now we stop on a dime. The family and I celebrated with a little vacation time in the beginning of July, but when I returned, I still had one little final brake issue now. I have this big pile of brake parts, some of them like in brand new condition, including the master cylinder. So I pile them up on a big piece of cardboard and put that in the, in the floor of the bus, and I take a ride up to Pegasus up in Linden, the guy who sold me the original brake master cylinder that I had purchased. When I arrived, he honestly was not all that happy about me wanting to return the part for a refund. I didn't need it anymore, and I guess I can understand the business side of his predicament. His shop was a big warehouse and garage full of VWs and parts and all kinds of vintage crap that was right up my alley. I told him that he needs a better website, but he said he's booked up a full year in advance with work and has restoration jobs waiting after those, so eh, what do I know? I thought that I had a solution for him, though, with my master cylinder predicament, so I asked him to come outside and see Wilson and see what I brought him. Inside the bus was the new master cylinder, my old Type 1 rear drums, my recently recut front bus drums, and all the new brake shoes and front and rear brake drums and backing plates and a big box of parts that I had for the bus that I no longer needed. We struck up a very reasonable deal for the extra parts and I got my refund and not only were we both pretty happy, but I also reclaimed a bunch of free space in my garage once again. I figured that the new set of tires all around and shocks are also in order for Wilson to complete my safe driving and braking efforts. I couldn't use the stock size shocks because my bus was now lowered and I needed to try to figure out a shock size that would work for me. But after my usual internet searches, I was able to get a set of KYB gas shocks from the local auto parts store. I did have a little bit more difficulty trying to get tires. Seems as if there are not nearly as many tire manufacturers that make 15-inch tires as there once were. And I'm guessing that the pandemic rubber shortage may have made some sizes nearly impossible to get. I settled for a slightly smaller 185 by 65 R15 rear tire to help me get the rear wheels on and off the bus, and a 165 50 15 for the fronts. Now, I didn't necessarily like the small sidewall on the fronts, but I wanted to make sure that the tires didn't rub on the inner wheelhouse. Now, I spent most of my summer driving Wilson everywhere I can. I go to work, I'm taking the bus. There's a cruise night, I'm taking the bus. The wife needs me to pick up a big box at the store, I'm taking the bus. Need gas for the grill? You guessed it, taking the bus. Funny thing is that it really makes me slow down both physically, because you know how slow a VW bus is, right? And also personally. If you've never lived or visited this area of the world where I am from, here in New Jersey, well, maybe I need to explain this to you. New York and New Jersey people can be a little quick or rushed with everything. I mean, not all people here are like this, but the majority of them are. I mean, I think we invented road rage here. We rush everywhere, fast, fast, fast. When I visit other areas of the country or the world, I sometimes just can't believe how calm and slow-paced people can be. It can drive a New Jersey person nuts. But now that I have Wilson, not only am I driving a lot slower with the bus, but everywhere I go, there's someone who wants to ask me a question about the bus or tell me a story or take a picture. I love it. Uh, I'm not complaining. And now I feel that I'm involving or evolving, I guess, into a more relaxed lifestyle and taking my time to enjoy things at a calmer pace, or at least I'm trying to. Now, my son-in-law, Connor, uh, he's also a motorhead, just like my son, Zach. And he asked me to come down to Asbury Park, New Jersey, for a cruise night car show they have every Thursday evening in the spring and the summer called The Circuit. Now, the circuit was one of the hottest places in streetcar action on the East Coast during the 60s to early 80s. It's not an official event. There's no car show, no trophies, no reserved parking. As the name implies, the circuit was a circular route or a loop along the beachfront of Asbury Park. At one time, Ocean Avenue was a one-way street heading north, and Kingsley was a one-way heading south, so the locals would gather and show off their cars, and sometimes drag race right in front of the old historic Stone Pony nightclub. Now, I set off on my longest road trip to date on a beautiful, sunny August afternoon and took the scenic route south to the Jersey Shore. 
About halfway there, I saw this beat-up old work truck slowing down and trying to get next to me at a few traffic lights until finally he was successful. He yells out to me, Hey, buddy, you're going the wrong way, as he points behind us. Woodstock is that way. We laugh, and I throw up a peace sign, and he throws one back, and I continue to cruise down to pick up Connor on the way to the circuit. We get down to Asbury Park, and I find a parking spot about a block away from the main action, but still close enough to be in the event. And no sooner do I park and I get out, do I have a young, happy guy and his girl come out and check out the bus and talk to us. He immediately extends his hand out towards my face with a big, lit joint, and I politely decline. I'm sorry, I say to him, I I don't smoke. He's cool with it, and honestly, I think he was a little surprised that this old VW bus guy wasn't wanting his weed. My wife, my daughter, and my granddaughter meet up with Connor and I so that we can all enjoy the evening and have a pizza party in the bus. We walk around, talk to the fellow car nuts for a few hours, and then decided to head home. It was an amazing evening, and I can't wait to do it again this summer. Hopefully with a prime parking spot if I get there early enough. Maybe I'll get to do a podcast from the circuit next time, or maybe I'll just get to meet one of you down there. Well, that about does it for this episode of Wilson the VW Bus. I want to thank you for listening, and please share this podcast or tell a friend about it if you enjoyed it. And don't forget to check out Wilson's Instagram at Wilson the VW Bus. Thank you.